Hi friends. I think we're live. How's everybody doing? Let me just set this all up so I can see your comments and everything. How's everybody doing today? I think today is going to be a good day with a hundred percent chance of crafting, right? All right. So we are working on another project today. So thank you so much for joining us. This um, I'm Lindsay with So Fancy, and um, give me a either a like or a thumbs up or um, let me know where you're watching from so I know that you can hear me. So let me go ahead and share this so that we can get started. We are talking about wooden signs. So do we have any sign makers out there? Um, and if you do make wooden signs, do you prefer using vinyl to do the designs or do you prefer doing um, stencils and then painting? So we're talking all about stencils and some of the challenges that can arise when, uh, sorry. We are sharing this. Okay, perfect. All right, so some of the challenges that can arise when you are um, making your signs with the stencils. Oh, hi, Rhonda from Alexandria, Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. Um, we are using designs from the big SVG sign bundle. So for all you sign makers out there, um, we've got tons of per the perfect SVGs for your sign making. And so let me go ahead and change the camera view here so you can see what we're working with. So um, what we're starting with is whether or not you are using um, just a small piece of craft, um, you know, the craft board, you know, or wood that you get from the uh, craft store or like a bigger piece of pine um, that you get from like the hardware store, the, the prep is gonna be exactly the same, which is starting with a sanding it. So you can get these um, sanding blocks um, at the hardware store and you want to sand them so that you're going with the grain of the wood. So the way I, you know, like to think of it is um, I look at the wood and I see which way the lines are going and then that's how how I know um, that the grain is going like this and so that's the way I want to do my sanding. Now um, these uh, sanding blocks are super great and they will get the, the, um, the job done. You want to start off with like maybe um, uh, I have a 120 here and then um, a 180. Um, but if you want to go super fast, you can use a palm sander. So um, I got this as a gift for Christmas, and it makes quick work of your um, getting these like super, super smooth, like baby soft smooth, which is the key to, um, you know, perfect sign making or as perfect as, as it can get. So, but if you don't have a palm sander, um, you know, start off with um, like a 180 sand with the grain until it is super, super duper smooth. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and um, paint your base layer. So I have mine over here. I've already gone ahead and painted it. And if you are painting with, actually, where did it go? finished one. Oh yeah, here it is. Perfect. Okay. So <clears throat> if you're painting with, um, you know, just like a regular chalk paint or something, um, and a paintbrush, then you also want to paint in, um, the direction of the grain as well. Um, so that way you're going to get the smoothest results and um, then, you know, honestly, I like to use like a spray paint 
Um, I think that gets the, the smoothest um, application with your base paint, um, but you can use uh, a paintbrush um, and paint, just paint in the direction of the grain. And then when you have finished your last layer of paint and your um, paint's completely dry, um, I like to take um, a really fine grit uh, sandpaper, so this is a 400, and then just lightly go over it. So that just smooths out um, the very last layer. So it is like super duper smooth, ready for your stencil application, which I have already cut um, with my Cameo 4 um, in Aura Mask. Um, or mask 813 so this is a stencil making material and it comes in um, rolls like this or um, you can get them in sheets what I like to do is I will cut the cut the stencil material from the roll um, into like a 12 by 12 and then flatten them out um, I actually um, will cut a bunch of sheets and then I like to put them under my um, computer because the warmth that little bit of warmth from the um, laptop like helps to like smooth it out and it's just a lot easier to work with because um, one of the things that you want to make sure that you do is um, keep this all nice and smooth when you cut it out oh hi Carla she's from Independence Ohio so we got a lot of like East Coasters um, I'm in California right now so it's about 10 o'clock so it's what three hours ahead for you guys good afternoon I should say um, so um, I uh, cut out my stencil this is from the big SVG sign bundle and um, one of the things you also want to make sure with the stencil vinyl is that it's really smooth against the backing so if for some reason it got creased like this little piece here um, got creased and then you can see it starting to like bubble up. Um, that's really important that you want to press that out with your scraper or you can use your hand so that it sticks really well to your cutting mat. Um, so yeah, using your scraper to put it on your mat so it's really smooth. Um, and then when you cut it out and you're doing your, your um, weeding, this is a little bit different than weeding a regular decal because normally you would weed out the excess around the design but since this is going to be a stencil you are actually taking out the design itself if that makes sense and leaving in the like the middles of the letters so it's like, you know, back, um, backwards. And I've already gone and done most of this here. So that it is coming out really nice. All right. Go ahead and clear this away. And um, like always, I did a test cut and then a test weed before I actually took this out of the machine. So I knew that I would get a nice clean cut there, um, which looks really nice. Okay. Um, so then the next step is your transfer tape. So with your transfer tape, I'm using mine um, right from the roll, so I need to cut a piece that's big enough to cover this. Um, but you can use the also use the kind that has the backing too. But then it's just super important that the transfer tape goes on really, really smooth. I mean, even with like vinyl decals and other type of work then um, you'd want this to go on super smooth but the key to getting the stencil on really smooth is um, making the transfer tape go on smooth too oh hi Jean um, NC North Carolina hi thank you so much for joining us this is uh, a nice day for crafting although I do say that every day is a good day for crafting 
So I am going to, I, what I like to do is stick the edge of the transfer tape to my work surface. And I like to use the grids on my mat here. And then I can line this up with it. And then kind of just stick the edge of the transfer tape down onto it. Grab my scraper and press that edge down so that it sticks initially so I can start to um, sh scrape this across just like that. And I've got the uh, my other hand pulling the transfer tape, you know, slightly taut, um, but then just slowly working that scraper over the stencil and then this little edge part here I'm just going to cut that off because I'm going to save this for another project because you can reuse your transfer tape. Um, okay so then what I also like to do is you know, burnish this really really well. Ideally you wouldn't want to see any bubbles between the transfer tape and the stencil. Um, and you can burnish it from the other side as well. And then there's a little piece stuck from a prior project. I always find little vinyl and stencil pieces everywhere around the house. <laughs> Is that um, not uncommon for you as well? Um, and then um, when a, a or when taking off the backing from the stencil material, I think the best way to do that, the best way I've found, is to actually roll the material off instead of to pull it, um, rolling it back onto itself. And I hold the transfer tape like this um, so that it stays flat while I roll back this backing. And this is going really well. Now, if there was something that I saw that was sticking on the edge, I could always, um, oops, we actually there's a little tiny piece there, which I'm not too worried about, but you can roll it back down and stick it back onto the transfer tape. All right, and then there you go. Okay, so now we have um, our painted wooden sign. Uh, that it, we've already smoothed out with um, a very fine, very light, fine sanding with their sandpaper and then our stencil. Um, cut using a design from the big sign or big SVG sign bundle um, that's going on now um, over at So Fancy, um, which has not only SVG designs, um, uh, but also some mock-ups too. So um, for those of you who um, like to, you know, sh show your customers um, some of the things that you can do or some of the um, designs, um, we have some um, photographs in there that you can use as mo as mock-ups. Um, so then, as for applying the stencil to the wood sign, um, you can either just apply it by eye, or you can use the hinge method. Um, do you want to see the hinge method? Oh, hi, Susan from North Dakota. Well, welcome. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the hinge method because the hinge method is what you can use to really get this lined up super straight. So you actually, um, after you would up take off the backing, you'd want to keep it on actually. So I'm going to re reapply the vinyl backing and then cut around the edge of this with my scissors. So I'll just cut off the extra transfer tape. The hinge method also works for applying 
vinyl decals to your surfaces. It allows you to line up the decal and see where you want it before actually committing and placing it on the decal or on the surface. So you can center it, get it placed perfectly. And I actually cut the stencil itself um, just about as big as the sign um, I was using. So it, there's not much left around the edge, but I can still see where it is, where the stencil is in relation to the sign behind it. And so I can move it around because the vinyl backing is still on. And actually I'm going to cut this little part of the backing. Not cut in my stencil. Yeah. So I'm actually cutting right up to the edge of the stencil through that vinyl backing. There we go. Okay, so now I can really align it and center it. And, and if you really wanted to, you could get out your ruler and measure it but I am just gonna eyeball this because I think it looks pretty good the way it is um, and then you actually need some um, painters tape so let me grab that <clears throat> so just like a low tack um, painters tape that you'll lay a strip down right through the center to tape this onto your surface. Okay, and then there's some extra left over. Let's cut that. Then what you can do is you take one side and peel back the back, the vinyl back, or I say vinyl, it's stencil material. This is Oramac. Um, 813 um, stencil material. Um, so I've, I've peeled it back from its backing and now I can go ahead and actually cut through this backing. Keep that down. And cut it off. And so then now, um, this tape is keeping it down. Um, I can just like a hinge, uh, then I can just lay this. Now the adhesive is exposed. And then use my scraper to put that right down onto the board. And then because this side is now applied, I can do the same exact thing to the other side. And it will be lined up exactly where I wanted it to be. So there you go. And using my scraper to apply pretty good pressure. I'm using my other hand to pull this taut so that I can get this stencil as smooth as I can onto the board because that is one of the biggest keys to not getting bleeding under your stencil. So for any of you who have made um, wooden signs with stencils, um, is that one of the frustrations that you run into before? getting bleeding under the stencil when you want to paint it. Okay, so then, now, here, I'll just take off this piece of um, painter's tape. Um, then the next thing that um, you uh, sometimes run into is when you are taking off the transfer tape, um, you really only, for this stencil material, you really only need like a medium or a low tack transfer tape um, because 
when you take it off the piece of wood, you don't want something super sticky, like a high tack transfer tape, to possibly take off some of the wood or um, take off some of the paint that's under it. So um, again, if the paint is really smooth, it's less likely to do that. And then if you painted um, in the direction of the grain of the wood, when you take off the transfer tape, um, roll it back on itself, just like we did the backing, um, and then take off the transfer tape in the opposite direction of the grain. So the grain of this wood was running um, left to right, so I am taking off the transfer tape from the top to the bottom and just rolling it back on itself instead of just lifting straight up. And then I don't get any of the paint coming up with it. Um, and then you can reuse this. And then I like to sometimes just go over with my finger, pressing down. Uh, but I can tell that I got a pretty, pretty good adhesion with this because you can actually kind of, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but you can see actually right through this blue tinted stencil material um, to the paint and wood grain underneath. So um, this is a pretty good, pretty good application here. Um, but then the next step is, of course, painting your stencil. And um, this is where you can run into some of the bleeding. So I um, want to paint the design in just like a, um, a gray, excuse me, it's not gray, it's Maui sand chalk paint. Um, and using a makeup sponge. So you can get a really smooth application um, of, the, of your paint with um, just a makeup sponge. This is from the dollar store um, and your um, paint of choice. Um, you can also use a spray paint as well, which is my preferred method. Um, but the key to trying to avoid the bleeding of the stencil is to paint your first layer of paint in the same color as your base layer. So I used white chalk paint. So let me grab that. I'm sorry, I thought I had everything set up. All right, but then I cleaned up, right? And I put everything away. <laughs> uh, so actually what I would do is paint my first layer of paint with the same color as the, bit, as the base layer. And so then if I do get any bleeding on the stencil, um, what's gonna happen is if it bleeds underneath, it doesn't really matter because it's the same color as what's underneath, right? So put a little bit in this little cup. I'm getting down to the little last bits of this. So I'm just gonna scoop out a little bit into this cup here. And then you can just start, oops, put this over to the side, and then start um, painting your stencil. And since this is the same exact color as our base layer, I'm not too worried about, I'm not worried about it bleeding underneath because if it does, it's gonna be the same color as the base. And what this first layer will do is put a little seal of that color around the edge of the stencil. So that when I do go in with my actual color, Uh, then it's less likely to bleed underneath. Now, um, I haven't taped off the edges of my stencil, um, and I'm not too worried about it with this coat of paint. 
Um, but when I go in with the gray, I would want to make sure that I either tape this off with some painter's tape uh, or just be really careful not to get any of the paint off of the stencil. All right, so fill that in with your base layer, the same color that you used. Um, just using a makeup sponge from the dollar store. And so then once, then you would want to let this dry completely. Um, then once it's completely dry, that's when you would go in with the color that you actually want to use. And um, you really don't need much paint when you are using your actual um, paint, you know, color for your sign. Um, in fact, if you get too much, you can, you know, dab it off on like a piece of parchment and then you would go in and just, this was my, the color that I was actually using. Um, I like to just dab it on up and down again to just try and avoid flipping any of that paint underneath the stencil. Um, so I would um, paint two layers of the color that um, I am using for my sign. I'm going to actually let this dry over to the side here and I have already done one ahead of time so you can see the process of removing the stencil once it's completely dry which I have right here so this is another design oops, upside down. this is another design from the big sign bundle and I have already painted this sign. I use a spray paint on the base um, and then again, as my first layers spray painted the stencil and then I went in with a gray and a yellow. Um, I was, I don't know, experimenting with um, new color combinations so I'm not quite sure how this is going to look but I thought hey I want to try it. So um, again another issue that can um, arise when you're doing stencils um, with your wooden signs is when you are removing the stencil, um, you don't want to remove any of the paint underneath. So um, again, removing the stencil in the opposite direction of the wood grain. So the wood grain goes from left to right. So I am going to roll back this stencil in the opposite direction of the wood grain. Oops. And it's usually helpful to have some tweezers here to help with those little bits that want to stick. The only thing you want to be careful about when you're using tweezers is not digging too deep into the actual wood itself and maybe chipping the paint. So just be aware of that. Had some of the little paint dust get on there but you can just blow that away okay I like the gray or excuse me Maui sand it wasn't gray it was Maui sand <laughs> um, let's see how the yellow does and I am really happy with the results on this top part I mean, I think that's as no bleed as you're going to get. Oh, and these letters look really crisp. There we go. This is just um, a very like lightweight, thin piece of um, craft wood that I got from the craft store. Uh, but even if you were using, you know, a large piece of pine from the hardware store, you know, the process of prepping and applying and painting.
protein is going to be pretty much exactly the same. Ooh, I think I do like the yellow and the gray. All right, and then there we go. And I didn't get any of the paint off of the base. Um, and then for the middles of the letters, um, you'll go in with either like your tweezers or you can go in with like a little needle. And again, just trying not to nick the paint underneath, which can kind of be tricky, but Luckily, if you do end up nicking it, you can um, just take a little bit of paint on your paintbrush and then you can go ahead and touch that up. Ooh, I'm really happy with this. Oops, I might have actually Very nice. I like this. Again, prepping the board by sanding it really well, um, applying your paint layers um, in the direction of the wood grain, and then applying your stencil very smoothly, applying your first layer of color in the same color as the base paint are keys to getting the stencil on nice and smooth so that you don't get any bleeding with your sign. All right, so I'm pretty darn happy with this. I think it looks pretty cute. And for these little signs, I picked up this um, base here that I got at the craft store. Um, it came with, oops, what's going on? Have I frozen? I think I might have frozen. Oh no. Uh oh. Let's see here. What's going on? Ay, ay, ay. Let's try it. Refresh this. Let's go back to here. Oh no, I don't know if I'm still on or not. It looks like I'm frozen. And I don't know how to fix it. Ay, ay, ay. I'll just go back to this one because I think this view is working. Sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyway, what I was showing you is that um, I get this little stand from the craft store and then you can put um, your um, little mini signs on your stand here. I think it turns out pretty cute. And, and then for those of you that do vinyl signs, so this is you know what we used with um, our stencil material. If you prefer doing vinyl, um, you can also get the same type of result by just using um, you know a vinyl decal over um, just a painted base. Um, and then again, you have another little sign for your easel here. All right, and then these designs, uh, the hello, it's so good to be home and the forever wild that I started and I will finish that and then I'll post a picture um, of it when I'm done. Um, come from the big SVG sign bundle, it's so fancy. 
Um, so check that out for your sign making needs. Um, there's also mock-ups in the uh, bundle as well. So um, thank you so much for watching, Amanda. Thank you from Atlanta. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. And, um, you know, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. You're able to do something crafty. And, of course, you know, we love seeing your, what you make. So, um, you know, hop on over to the You So Fancy Inspiration Facebook group and um, post some of your designs in there because we love to see them. Anyway, uh, have a good day. Bye.